Hey, Rich, how are you doing today? Good morning, gang. I'm going to keep everyone muted as you come on the call, um, and I will uh, set things up in a couple of minutes. So you've got five minutes. Make yourselves at home, grab a cup of coffee or whatever you need to get ready, um, and we'll begin in about five. Um, if you're here early, that's great. What I'd love is if you drop into the chat, uh, let us know where, are in, the, where in the world are you? And uh, uh, yeah, that would be, that'd be great. Let's, let's see where we all are in the world. That's great, gang. I'm just playing with the settings here in the background. Oh, hello. We've got someone in Santa Monica. Hi, Fairborn. Down the corner to me, I guess. Uh, we've got South Africa here. All across the United States. England. We've got Sweden in the house. Chile. Australia. More from London. Canada. I love this. Munich, the North Georgia mountains, Texas. Love this gang, this is great. Okay, welcome. If you're just joining us, um, I'm, I'm getting one set up. We're a couple of minutes early. Um, take a moment to get yourselves settled. Um, I'll give an introduction and talk things through and I'll tell you about my special guest today. But right now we're just saying where we are in the world. And it's really fun just to feel connected in this way. Uh, can I see? Oh yeah, we've got 155 people on already. Um, who's, who's tired of doing Zoom calls already? Who's had enough? I'm done with Zoom. <laughs> that's it. Another Zoom call and I'm just, that's it. I know the feeling. Uh, my, my eight-year-old said to us yesterday, I am going on strike next week. I cannot handle homeschooling. Uh, I don't, it's boring sitting doing worksheets or Zoom calls. I'm on strike next week. So Monique said to him, well, if you can write a persuasive letter to me and your dad to explain why you don't want to do homeschooling, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea because he's really excited about writing this persuasive letter right now. So uh, we, we, I don't know what we'll do next week. We, um, we went around the corner yesterday. We have friends who live around the corner and we went out on the streets, a quiet street. The kids and, and the parents all had gloves on. We all had masks on and we played some softball in the street. It was kind of a surreal moment. It was fun and it was sweet and the kids loved seeing their friends. But um, it's, we live in a very strange moment in time right now. And I'm trying to remind myself and my wife of this as we're trying to do homeschooling because I used to be an educator. I was a teacher for 15 years, that actually it doesn't matter so much about whether they get through the curriculum or what the teachers have set them. It's the time we have together. I'm trying to see the, the positive on this. Yep, I agree with you, Marcin. It is gonna be strange going back to real meetings again. Yeah. Um, any of you had a, uh, maybe some of you are familiar with the, uh, the Donald Duck approach to uh, Zoom meetings. It means you get dressed from the waist up, but you could be wearing anything you want from the waist down. And there's been a few videos of that that have popped up on uh, uh, YouTube and so on, some poor people who, who didn't realize uh, what they were up to on Zoom. <laughs> so feel free today. Um, most of today is uh, gonna be me and uh, one of my friends and clients and colleagues, uh, Vicki Shillington, talking and sharing some of her wisdom. We may take some questions uh, later on as well. Um, and I'll keep an eye on the chat while Vicky's sharing. She's got some real wisdom to share with us. I'll introduce her in a minute. So we're at the top of the hour. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick scan through the screens. I've got, I've got nine, I have a big monitor and I, I've got 14 screens right now of you. It's great, those of you who keep your camera on, 
Um, one thing keeping your camera on like this really does keep you more present. Uh, the, I understand if you're, if you're doing things with the kids or you're in your PJs right now why you may not want to turn your camera on, but it really does have you be more present when the camera's on. Um, I'm having a quick look through. Uh, let me do one thing to the settings. Where am I? Uh, Vicky, can you unmute? Are you here yet, Vicky? I've got so many screens. Yes, I am. Hi, Rich. Okay. Vicky, you've got to... Oh, there you are. Okay, great. I see you. <laughs> um, I'm hiding in all the screens. <laughs> so I'm going to check another setting, which means that nobody can unmute themselves right now other than you and me talking. So um, can I recommend you guys turn it on to speaker view in this moment? That way you won't get distracted by uh, how many now? 400 people now so far on the call. No pressure on us, Vicky, right? Um, and, and Vicky, why don't you do the same? Turn it on to speak of you. Okay. Which means you can only see me. And then it means it. everyone else gets to do what they need to do right now. So I love that Magda is out in nature. And I love that uh, Jim and Ankit are pretending they're out in nature because they changed the backgrounds behind them, which is awesome. Um, so hi and welcome to everybody. Uh, Vicky, I'm going to introduce you, set things up, and then we'll, we'll play today. How many of you uh, have, how many of you have known me for, for at least a year? Uh, uh, give me a wave. How many have known me for at least a year or you've been to one of my events? I'm just doing a quick scroll through the screen to get a sense. All right, and let, let's do the opposite. How many of you are new to me someone told you me about who i am a few days ago a few weeks ago you came across this facebook group that we're on how many of you are pretty new to to me and to what i do that's great well welcome to those of you who are really new to, to our world i'll give you a quick introduction then to who i am and what i do i've i was an educator for 15 years a uh, high school teacher i taught in inner city london i taught in uh, uh southern africa in botswana for two years and I taught out in Southeast Asia, I lived out in uh, Brunei for four years, helped to set up an international school. I was on a fast track to be a head teacher and my career came to a screeching halt when I went to work for a very inspiring boss and they got fired a, a week or two later and the new boss came in and she wanted her own team and I got fired very unceremoniously a week or two after that. Went off to Thailand to lick my wounds and I'd been trained in coaching already for two years. From 2003, I was training for the National Professional Qualification for Head Teacher um, in England. And I'd been training coaching skills for two years. And I was devastated at losing my job. Everyone advised me to get back into teaching. And I sat on this beach and I talked to people and I asked them these coaching questions. And it turns out, especially when people are on a beach, they like to reflect on life. And one woman changed my life because she said, Rich, those 30 minutes when you asked me those questions, that changed my life. And it really struck me and I made this decision. I'm not going back to the field I used to be in. I'm gonna be a professional coach. I flew to the United States. Uh, it, it was the rainy season in Thailand and didn't wanna stay there. Flew to the States to get a qualification as a, as a coach. And the coaching, Qualification was really, really bad. Uh, the, the training was awful. And after two days, they had a money back guarantee. So I asked for my money back after two days. And I went to do this other training about relationships and intimacy. And I met this woman there. And 10 days later, I proposed to her. Uh, she's now my wife. We've been married for 12 years. I read a chapter about this in a book that I published called The Prosperous Coach. It's called Never Propose to a Woman 10 Days After You Met Her. Now, that was the moment I decided to become all in a professional coach. Two or three years later, I was building my practice one relationship at a time. And I was on the faculty of a couple of coach training schools and people kept asking me, how are you doing this? How are you building your business? And I would write about this. And one day, one of the people who led those coaching schools, a man called Steve Chandler, Steve said to me, do you want to write a book together, Rich? A book about how to build a coaching practice one conversation at a time because you've already written half of it. He'd seen all the posts I'd written in the forum we used to have back then. So Steve and I wrote a book called The Prosperous Coach. It came out in 2013. And 
uh, what are we now, 20, 20, seven years ago, eight years since we wrote it, still sells a thousand copies a month. It's really hit a nerve in the coaching world. It, it's a really old fashioned approach to business. And so a few days ago, so I've built a community of coaches for years. I've really been there serving coaches, uh, have a small group of very high performing leaders and coaches. I call 4PC, the 4% club. And 4PC is the, 4% is the top 20% of the top 20%. These are leaders in the, uh, who've been uh, entrepreneurs or high level executives, and they've come into uh, coaching from another field. When everything began to change three weeks ago, I, I, I put a lot of attention on how can I serve my clients and my community? And then it dawned on me, what if I created a Facebook group to serve the wider community of coaches? And created a Facebook group, wrote, wrote something called a playbook for coaching in challenging times. Uh, if you haven't seen that, just, just type richlitvin.com forward slash playbook. richlitvin.com forward slash playbook. It will really help you set you up for surviving and thriving in the next few weeks and months ahead. Opened up this Facebook group and it grew to 1500 people in, in a week or so. And somebody in the group wrote and said, wow, Rich, you've created a Facebook group that in a week has gone to 1500 people. That's amazing. And I wrote back and said, no, I've spent 15 years serving people so that when I created a Facebook group in 10 days, 1500 people joined it. And, and that's the premise of everything that I'm about slowing down to speed up. And so welcome to those of you who are new to our Facebook group. Uh, uh, if, you're not, if you're not even on that Facebook group, just put my name into uh, uh, Facebook, two or three posts down, you'll find a, a link to that Facebook group. It'll let you in later. That's some background for those of you who are completely new to our world. Welcome. Vicky Shillington is one of the members of my community called 4PC. And the other day, Vicky led us in a talk and a presentation that was so powerful. I said, I want to hear that again, Vicky. And I think I want to introduce you to my entire community and this premise and this idea that you're teaching this model because it's so powerful. Vicky right now, she's got clients who lead billion dollar corporations and she has a passion for startup companies. She's an expert in business. When I first met Vicky, here's the funny thing, Vicky. When I first met you, you used to tell me that you were known as the chief happiness officer in your businesses. Now, I got that. I, I got that you had an impact. I saw what you'd done, your career. I read about what you'd up, been up to. But the little skeptical part of me, I've never said this out loud to Vicky, you guys. The little skeptical part of me, chief happiness officer, that seems so fluffy. Like, how does that get to be real? And as I've got to know Vicky more and more, I get two things, the paradox of A, it, it is a little fluffy to talk about happiness in organizations, but B, there's nothing more powerful than creating communities of people who are leaders in organizations who are on the same mission and who generate a sense of well-being and happiness from the inside out before they're on, in order to be on purpose and because they're on purpose. And so Vicky, let, let me unmute you. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, now I'm going to change my settings for one second so I can unmute you. Did you mute yourself? Oh, there you go. You're unmuted. Great, Vicky. So hi, Vicky. Um, I, I love who you are. I'm an admirer of you. I've curated, created communities for years where I say the entrance requirement is that we should be a bit in awe of you and you should be a bit in awe of us. And I want you to know that I'm really in awe of you. That's why I'm uh, happy to put you in front of hundreds and hundreds of people from our community this morning. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Rich. Yeah, and thank you for the, the powerful introduction. Uh, it's a uh, you made me smile when you mentioned chief happiness officer because it's it's who i am not necessarily what i do and so your distinction there was was very impactful and i like to be a little bit controversial a little bit of a heretic and it allows me to filter for very interesting clients so i love it i stick with it and as as you shared it's not actually easy what i do but the result is is, is joy and happiness and that's what i'm about Beautiful, beautiful. So I, I'd love you to share with us this um, message that you have today and this particularly this model that's very powerful. What I want to invite everyone else to do as Vicky's sharing, to stay present, feel free to keep notes. I, I was writing so much the other day when Vicky was talking. In particular, feel free to post stuff in the chat. I will keep an eye on the chat as, as Vicky is sharing. And we may take some questions from you a bit later on, but don't write your questions now. I won't be able to follow them as, 
uh, as they're going along. But as you as you capture ideas and thoughts, please please share them. Um, uh, so Vicky, let, let you, you you jump in. Let's have you teach. All right. Well, hi everyone. It's it's just a joy to be here with you. When I see the number of participants going up. <laughs> It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> I think we're almost at 600 right now, Rich. I'm taking back 15 years where I was terrified to talk in front of three people. <laughs> so this is edgy but wonderful for me. And um, so what I want to take you guys through this morning is a very useful model that's based on change curve theory, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And it's very helpful as we go through this current crisis. But the idea is that let's simplify it to three stages that we're all going through. And it's going to be a guide for you as individuals, a guide for you as teams, um, as part of a larger family. Um, if you're a manager, it's going to be a guide for you in that role as well. Because if you can predict what you're going to see from others as we go through this journey, you'll know how to accelerate your own mindset and how to help others move through to the new normal quicker. Vicky, can I add one distinction in as well? For those of you who are coaches, it's for your clients and then to go two layers deep, your clients' clients. There are business owners at every level that you're teaching and coaching and working with right now. And this is a tool you can take to them and then say, let's take this to your clients too. I wanted to bring that in so people have another distinction. They're not just listening for themselves as business owners. How can they help their clients? How can they help their clients' clients or their clients' customers? Yeah, I love that. So the basic premise is that everybody at an individual level will go through each of these three phases I'm going to be describing. And each team's going to do the same, each company is going to do the same, and every nation as well. And the likelihood of everyone being at the same stage at the same time is highly unlikely. And the consequences, if you act in one phase and somebody else is in another, has devastating effects on the other person. It's really not good. So it's a very helpful framework to assess where are you where is your family, your clients, your team members? Where is everybody? And what's the right way to tune your actions and behaviors so that you can be with them in the right way and accelerate them to the new normal as quickly as possible? So the three phases I'm going to talk about are the chaos phase, the acceptance phase, and the new normal. So if I start with the chaos phase, basically this is where your world is full of confusion. It's been turned upside down. It's hard to see beyond anything other than your personal well-being and safety. Uh, right now, you are scared for your physical safety, for yourself, for your loved ones, um, your emotional safety. It's a little bit of a roller coaster for all of us as we hear different elements of, of stories in the news and of our friends and those out there. And then the financial safety, the economy is all over the place. So this phase is all about safety. And what that feels like is adrenaline. Adrenaline kicks in and we push through. So there's a lot of effort we create to figure out how to stay safe and how to take others on the journey with us and to create a world where we can keep going. So you'll feel a boost of temporary energy, but it is temporary. Now, if I think about the characteristics of a team, for those of you that have teams around you, what they will typically do is basic actions. If they're not really gonna step outside the boundaries too much. They are operating from fear at this stage. So they're gonna do what they need to do, but they're not gonna do anything beyond that. And then similarly, they're gonna have this feeling of, am I doing enough? I can see Joe over there. He seems to be doing so much. Am I, am I good enough? Should I be doing more? But I don't wanna do more because I feel scared. I don't want to push boundaries. I don't wanna raise any red flags. And for managers that aren't fabulous, the challenge becomes they tend to over control which could add stress because they are struggling with feeling so out of control. So they start to create more action for their teams. And it's really interesting at the stage to think about in five years time, if we were sitting here together in five years time and we look back on Q2 2020, are we really gonna think about all those activities we got done, all those worksheets the kids did? <laughs> I doubt it. We're gonna be thinking through were we able to create the space for ourselves? As Rich said, could we slow down? Could we create new routines for ourselves and our families and come out of it with a sense of, of well-being and, hey, I was able to shift during this period. My bet is going to be the latter, not how much we got done. Vicky, my, Vicky, my experience is that fear is actually an amplifier. So when we get afraid, those managers who are poor at managing 
get worse at managing. The yeah. managers and leaders who are great will step into their power. Yeah. This is a tool to help those leaders who are great really be even greater, but also to see if you're down here and you're, you're stuck in this phase of trying to do more or you know, right now, so many companies are saying, we're forced to be on Zoom all day. We can't even do the work you want us to do because those yeah. micromanaging leaders, they're able to see now how, how things could be different. Yeah, and I was talking to a client yesterday and her CEO was saying, I need you all 24 seven weekends because it's just so odd right now. And so they all hear that and think, oh, well, if I don't do that, I could be the one who loses my job. Mm -hmm. Now think of the message that's sending. That's not helpful because yes, you can do Zoom all day. You can do all your emails. You can respond at 10 p.m. at night. But how much of that is really going to move the needle when everybody's just reacting? Just a lot of busy work. So what a caution there as we go into that stage. Vicky, let me just remind everyone before you go on, if, if you just joined the course, some of you just joining, um, I recommend you put us on uh, Speak of You, I think it's called. So you just see Vicky and me talking. You don't get distracted by the hundreds of faces that are on right now. And then you'll, you can be more present with us. If you need to be uh, uh, off camera, I totally get it. Some of you sent me private messages with your kids right now. Do what you need to do to take care of yourselves. Um, but the, if you stay on camera, it actually keeps you more present. Okay, Vicky, thanks. Now, if we take it up a level beyond an individual and a team, if you think of a company, what companies are experiencing right now is, hey, how do I stay safe in terms of my financials? What do my customers need? How do I pivot? So a lot of my passion clients are restaurants and I am helping them pivot to, hey, the takeout model or what does it look like when we re-enter after this? So it's what do your customers need and what are the financials? And many companies have a plan B template, like talking about what happens when I hit a certain number, the certain threshold around revenue, what do I do in terms of the health of my organization. So in this phase, the key things to do here, because it's all about safety, we need reassurance that we are going to be okay. So tune your communication to be empathetic, to really think about them and their family and what they're going through and understand where their fears are coming from and help try and reduce them. It's all about empathy, it's all about health, it's all about family, and the basic activities you need to survive at this stage, nothing more, nothing less. So this is the time to be reactive, it's a time of chaos, and it feels out of control. So Rich, that's the first phase. Any comments on that or should I move on to the next Yeah, one? no, that's great. That's great. Let's, let's have uh, some of you writing notes as, as we go along. A any thoughts or comments, put them in right now as, as uh, Vicky's talking about the first phase, because rather than her just teaching at you, we can have this be a bit more interactive. Um, for, for me, Vicky, there's this paradox, right? Because it's, it's this phase where I see myself in fully in action, working really hard, creating uh, uh, as much support as I can for my current community, creating ways for people who don't even know me that I can be out there of service. And, and I also find myself being on the edge of being a little bit burnt out because I'm doing so much. So I'm, I'm trying to train myself. Those of, you who don't, those of you who don't know me, a guiding phrase and a light in my life is slow down to speed up. And mm. what I'm discovering in my business, Vicky, is that every time right now someone in the team does something really fast because they're trying to help out clients or people who, who are asking for help and they rush, we end up having to spend more time clearing up the mess that that's created. Mm. So it's counterintuitive at this moment in time where it feels like I should be reactive or the team should be, the slower we are, the deeper the breaths we take before we take action, the more impact we have. And the, the faster we go, the more mess we create at this moment. Yeah. And that's why for me, I always think about in five years, what's really going to matter for what I'm doing right now. And I weigh up everything, you know, for me, taking care of me and finding I need more naps and, and just downtime. And so I'll weigh up any act action and think, is it worth, will it be worth it in five years for me to do this thing? Um, or should I have a nap? <laughs> and what's gonna be more valuable? And it's a very good barometer to be thinking about. It's also a really good time. Uh, we're all coaches, right? In, in this group or consultants. Uh, we've got to walk our talk. I hired a new coach uh, 10 days ago for myself. I knew that I needed support and the business mastermind I'd been in for a couple of years couldn't give me that one-on-one -on -one support. So we can't see it for ourselves. When we get afraid, our gaze is designed to go like this. Well, our gaze narrows so we can focus on the one thing that needs to be done. But, but you stay like that for too long and you're missing all sorts of opportunities around you, uh, connections and ideas. And so we need support where we can breathe for a moment. 
and, and, and be back on track to what's important. And we have to walk our talk on that one. We can't be telling our clients, drink lots of water, take care of yourselves, move your bodies. If we're at home in fear and in action. Yeah. Cool. Let me just quick scan through any uh, questions here, Vicky, and then see where we go. Uh, there's a lot of them right now. So uh, uh, it's not change something theory, it's just change theory, right? Yeah. Or is it change curve theory? Is that what it's called? There's different ways people talk about it, but it's, it's the basic theory of change. Okay. Um, thank you guys for sharing your insights. Let me see what else we've got. Any questions? Yeah, actually, if you guys could put the letter Q, uh, capital letter Q before, when well, I can skim through, I can see that you've got a question after it. Uh, Sue asks, is there a therapeutic benefit in feeling the chaos before we move through? Uh, Vicky, what's your thought on that one? Yeah, definitely. Um, the old Vicky would have uh, gone into containment mode and not felt it at all. <laughs> but since yeah. I have been working with Rich and some others over the last couple of years, I'm learning the benefit of just being okay with whatever feelings are coming up and, and letting them pass through. And it's tough, but they do pass. And if you don't let them sit with you, then they get stored in your body somewhere and that's not healthy. I've learned that lesson deeply. Totally, totally. Um, and I just reminded by somebody asking, we, if you have to drop off early because you had problems with the kids and things like that, um, <laughs> problems with the kids, um, uh, <laughs> feel free to drop off. We're gonna, we're gonna we'll capture the audio for this, put it on my podcast, we'll capture the video for this and we'll, we'll get it out later. So if you don't wanna be seen on camera, hide yourself away now, because we do wanna share this, there's such valuable information here. Um, I don't see any more questions in this moment, Vicky. So let's, let's, oh, hang on a second, let's see. Oh no, I do, people are starting to put the questions in there. Here we go, here we go. Um, okay, some of these questions, Vicky, are, are just a little bit more complex than what we're gonna spend time going on to now. Um, Okay, let's do this one question in this moment. I'll skim through the questions again in a second. What, what would be the appropriate leadership style for this phase from Veronica, Vicky? It's a, a, a very careful line to thread between high empathy and action. So always asking yourself the question of how much time am I spending really checking in with this person and making sure they're okay at the individual level and then helping them take action so they don't freeze. Because in this stage, you're experiencing fight, uh, fright or flight. So it's, it's very much the amygdala part of your brain, the reptilian part of your brain that's kicking in. So we need to feel safe. So it's, hey, this person cares about me. They're checking in. They're providing perspective and calm. They look okay. So I'm going to be okay. And then moving them to action. But action that matters. Lisa asks a question. She says, I'm seeing with some of my clients. Um, uh, she has high-level clients in a big hotel chain. Um, they're having to furlough hundreds of employees and they're getting furloughed themselves. Uh, working women adjusting to being homeschooling mums. Uh, those attempting to work and homeschool is a lot of chaos. Um, and then she says, I, but I do see some settling in occurring as well. So I think that brings us to the mm -hmm. next stage. So let's, let's do that as a, a lead in. Perfect segue. Thank you. So the next phase, the acceptance phase, uh, this is categorized by for yourselves as individuals huge frustration. This is when you're thinking, oh gosh, you know, we really are here for a very long period of time, more than just a couple of weeks. It's not just one or two weeks. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the long haul. Um, and so we have to figure out, are we going to simply endure or are we going to take this as an opportunity to thrive? We have a choice to make here. But we also have to recognize that at this stage, our energy probably has crashed. So if you're feeling low, if you're feeling like there's been a dip in energy, that's because the adrenaline is gone. And so it's okay, it's okay. So know that at this stage, you are gonna need those naps, which I'm, I'm graciously giving myself. Also know that you'll probably experience more guilt at this stage, because you'll be thinking I should be doing more. So know that that's a normal part of this stage. And- Vicky, let me, let me ask that question right now. Will, will you raise your hand if you are feeling a sense of guilt right now? Guilt, because I'm working on my business, I should be with my kids. Guilt, because I'm with my kids, when I should be with the business. And God forbid you take a moment to yourself, guilt that you're not with the kids or with the business. Who knows any of those? Give us a wave so we can just see. Yeah. Uh, and they roll off my tongue because I feel all of them. Thanks, Vicky. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is where self-compassion is needed. 
just recognizing the phase we're in and hugely compassionate for yourself and just be okay with whatever's coming up. Um, and the reason it's really important to be okay with that is because this is also the stage where depression can set in because we are in it for the long haul. I know on the weekend when I heard that in Los Angeles, this is going to be another month, even though in my crystal ball, I knew June was the earliest we'd get out of this, just hearing that I wouldn't be able to see my friends for another month and to have that human connection. As much as I'm enjoying the space and quiet, there was a level of, I'm feeling really sad now. This is, this is a long time. So know that that's happening. And so what you can expect from anyone working in teams is that you will expect the productivity that you have had through that adrenaline kick in the chaos phase will now start to evaporate. People are starting to get a sense of, of, of balance a little bit and we'll get a real contrast between those that are able to adapt, those that are able to take any challenge that comes at them and figure out what they need to do and those that aren't. It's gonna be really obvious. The leaders that are making the good decisions for the social good and the leaders that aren't. It's becoming really, really obvious. Uh, just a month ago, it was very, very difficult to crystallize those distinctions. Now we can see them. It's so obvious who's getting to it and who's not, who's making great decisions and who's not. Managers will also tend to get pretty frustrated during this phase because it's just harder to get things done as the energy drops. So if you are a leader or a manager, just being really kind to yourselves as you think through this, what are the right activities for my team and how do I get them to do them well? Because I, I, I can't have the same pace and throughput as we had in the chaos phase where everybody suddenly pivoted to working remotely and what did that look like? If we go up a level to companies, what you'll start to see is the dying businesses, those that were dying anyway are gonna die faster. Um, many have already done that. And the growing businesses are gonna grow faster. And we will see many more market opportunities that will become visible. And if you think about 2008, you know, we had Venmo, Groupon, Airbnb, Uber, they all came out of that 2008 crisis. And the reason why is if you think about it right now, the bar to entry to becoming an entrepreneur is pretty low because everybody's so fearful of losing their job. So if you're fearful of losing your job and you had this great idea and you've seen this opportunity, go for it. You don't quite know what else is going to happen. This is the time to do it. And the other thing to watch out for in organizations is that morale and any kind of momentum, it'll be a struggle to do anything other than basic business as usual. You're not going to be able to rally the troops on the stage. There's just this degree of huge frustration and it's just feeling really, really heavy. So the things you should start doing in this phase is start to think through uh, new problems and short-term opportunities. Nothing too big, nothing too radical, but the small opportunities that are in front of you. And the trick here is to do less and do it well. So choose the few big things you want to do and do them well. That your instinct in the stage will to continue doing a lot. But here is really the time to adopt Rich's philosophy of slow down. Slow down. Choose those few things that you need to do and do them really, really well. It's also the stage where uh, I think it's a great idea to revisit what I call your five-year goals. When I think about life between the ages of 20 and 65, when most of us are working, we have nine five-year chunks. And if you can be crystal clear about your number one priority for those five years, then everything else is secondary. Humans are great at wanting our cake and eat it. And so we get overwhelmed. It doesn't really work like that. So if you say, you know what, for these five years, it really is my family. Everything else is secondary. Then when you have to make that hard call about, hey, I need to go and do this activity with my kids, or I've got an important meeting, and you don't know how to make a choice, that five-year prioritization will give you that ability to do that. And the beauty of this is the next five years could be about income maximization or career or whatever it might be. And you're okay with that. So you can pivot and have everything you need, but in a way that works for your life and you don't have to feel like it's all now. It can be in different stages. This is a great time to do that exercise if you haven't thought of life in that way. And then finally, this is a really important time to build a new routine for your integrated work life. So thinking through work, family, and yourself. We've all been struggling with that most of our lives. This is the time to really nail that routine and to start with, if I was to create my ideal day, what would that look like? Where would my self-care fit into that day? I like to do those things first. I like to spend two, three hours when I wake up and really make sure I'm doing my exercises, my prayer, my meditation, 
drinking my water, having something nutritious, because that sets up my day. And I know the day is going to be great from there. The days I don't do that, I'm in a funk. It just doesn't feel as good. So my commitment during this period that I'm in right now is it's a non-negotiable. I will absolutely do that for myself. And then what are the hours where I work? What are the hours where I nap? What does that look like? So I've got that ideal schedule. Where's the time where I go for a walk with my husband every day, where we have meals together? And there are real blessings in that if we do slow down. I have uh, a client in Italy, and they were talking about, hey, we're playing games with our kids now that we played when we were 10 years old. <laughs> and that's kind of cool. This is, this is the time to do that kind of stuff. But you, you consciously have to design that schedule because our days are not actually that long. And the inherent um, culture we work in in the Western society is very much addicted. It's the one addiction we all seem to love is being a workaholic and no one's going to tell you to slow down. So no one can actually see you right now other than on Zoom. So what you're doing with your day is pretty much up to you. This is the time to create that schedule and every day just get a little bit better at it because if you can come out of this period, because we are in for the long haul and we have a new way of being in the world, new habits, more self-care, ah, the world will be so different. What a blessing. I wish that for all of you. What a blessing. All right, Rich, that's that phase. So, so let's pause on that phase. Um, I've got a couple of questions from you. If you guys have questions from, around from this second phrase, put the letter Q in front of it. And I know it's a question rather than just an insight you're sharing. And I'll scan through those in a minute. I've scanned through some of the other questions, Vicky. Um, how, how would you get a leader out of micromanagement, Vicky? How would you, how would you do that? <laughs> oh, Rich, that's another topic on my circle of suck. <laughs> um, yeah. I suppose if I had to think of something that was short and succinct, when you're an individual contributor, you tend to do whatever activities are set in front of you because you're really, really good at them. So you become a superstar at that activity and you love doing it. You're the best at it. So someone promotes you to being a manager and you, you love that. You've got a new title, you've got more money. And However, if you don't think about everything you did before as no longer part of your job description so that you can really learn how to take care of others, what are their behaviors, work preferences, motivating styles? How do they like to think? Are they more left or right brain? If you don't get to know them and what makes them tick and figure out how to best motivate them, do you coach, support, direct, champion? There's a lovely model around that as well. If you don't learn how to do that, then you end up in what I call this circle of suck, which is where you keep doing the thing you did before and all it feels like to the other person is you're in their space. So if you are getting into the how, you're micromanaging, stick to the why and the what. Why are we doing this? What are we doing? And then ask them through questions to get them to think through the how. But if you're dipping into the how, you're in that territory. But yeah, that is a, another fabulous concept, which we should probably do at some point. Yeah, that, that's, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, so, just as an aside, someone said to me, we should set this up as a Zoom, set, Zoom webinar next time so we can capture questions in a different way. Um, I, we didn't want to. We, we like to do this. This isn't a webinar. This is, this is community. We're all about community here. So we wanted to be able to see each other, not be teaching with just one person on a screen or some slides. We're about really building community. Um, and so that's why we do it this way, even though it probably ways that might capture information better. We're also about insight rather than information. You know, Vicky will share with you that, we better share the sheet that, that had the model yeah. on Vicky. So we'll find a way to yeah. get that out to you in the Facebook group, um, or we set it out to my email. Uh, but what's much more important, the information on that sheet, is if you walk away with one insight from this and then you apply it, that's the power of coaching. It's about insight, not information. Uh, so Vicky, here's another question for you. Is the aim to move th from chaos at that phase out of it as quickly as possible? Is there merit in staying in that phase? What are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. Um, I, I think going from chaos to acceptance to new normal as quickly as possible um, is, a, is the desire. We also have to recognize that we go backwards. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine in the UK, his girlfriend passed away from the coronavirus. You know, that took me straight back into chaos. I thought I was moving along quite nicely. And um, you go straight back there when your safety feels threatened, but you also bounce back quicker. So the new normal is where you see the opportunity. So going through these phases as quickly as you can 
is good, but you also have to recognize your emotions are your emotions. You're going to feel what you're going to feel. And there's no right or wrong. It's just at some point we need to get out the other side. It reminds me, Vicky, there's a cartoon by Hugh McLeod that says two, two panels. On the left, it says what leadership looks like and what leadership feels like. And what leadership looks like is <laughs> yeah. this triangle like this with the hierarchy of leadership. And what leadership looks like is this massive lines drawn all over the place. And I think this, this, while it would be lovely for this to be linear, you go from chaos all the way through to the new normal and as fast as you can get there. But I think it's going to be up and down and backwards and forwards for us because we're human. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, all right. Oh, hi, Mark. Nice to see you're here. Um, let's see what else we've got as questions on this one. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to look through those questions while you're talking about the next phase, actually, Vicky, like I did last time. So let's do that. Let's have you talk about the new normal in the third phase. Okay. So the new normal, this is the phase categorized by hope, where you can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yippee! You know, we're coming out. <laughs> but actually, this is the phase where you also need to be really careful because it could be categorized by a struggle to get back into it because suddenly it's going to start to feel really busy. So your stress will be different. So think about this for those of you that are working from home and you no longer have to commute. If you're living in a large city like I am in Los Angeles or London or New York, any of the big cities, and, or any city where you have a commute, suddenly you're adding back in that commute. And it's been pretty delightful to not have to commute this last month. Secondly, if you are in an office environment, what you tend to experience is the distractions. As much as you enjoy having people around you, there's a huge amount of distraction as people do their drive-bys and chat next to you, et cetera. And you know, a lot of my clients are thrilled that the level of drama has gone down little catty chats that happen that just drive everyone crazy that's all disappeared and that all comes back so now we have drama now we have distractions now we have commute and companies are go 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 you know they're like hey we need to we need to get back into this we need to create energy so it's going to feel very very busy and heavy that's another reason when you are in this acceptance phase create your space create your routines take care of you so that you come out stronger because if you don't it's going to be very hard if your tank is empty to go at the pace that's going to be needed. The reason it's going to be really important as well is that the loyalty to employees is going to drop. I'm really impressed right now that companies are taking such good care of their people where they can. They're doing everything they can to avoid layoffs, furloughs, that's going to change. Vicky, Vicky, can you, can you pause for a second? Your, your signal's dropped. Vicky, your yeah. signal's dropping a little bit. Can, can, you, can you go back and say that again? I want to see if we were losing you for a moment. Uh, here you go, guys, in real time, showing you that uh, it looks like it should be linear going to the third phase. The new normal is there, and suddenly we're back in chaos. Uh, Vicky, I can see you smiling again, so maybe... Okay. Yeah, let's see. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rich. So um, we got to the stage where we're thinking about uh, organizations during this phase are looking after their people. But when we come out of the new normal, there will be less likelihood for them to take care of you in the same way. Because right now they want their pound of flesh. They've taken care of you. They want to make sure that you are operating at the pace they need you to operate at. And also the market has been flooded with talent. There's no longer gonna be the war for talent. So you know, the, the cost to entry to bring in new employees is gonna be high. So this is a time to really make sure you're operating at the pace the organizations need you to be operating at. And the reason it's gonna feel really, really tough, as well as those characteristics I described, is that teams will start to feel depleted and under-resourced. Most companies have frozen their hiring recs. Uh, there isn't any new, new people coming on board. They may have laid off some people. So you're going to see a lot more consolidation, reorganization, new teams created, and that's going to cause a huge amount of stress. Anytime a team member changes, it adds 73% more stress to the team. So that is another element that's going to weigh heavily on us as we start working back in the new normal. From the company side, we'll start to see a lot more acquisitions, divestures, corporate restructuring, and it's all going to be about growing and going fast. And there are huge opportunities here. 
if you get the timing right. And the key thing here where I'm helping my clients think about the re-entry phase already is that things will never be the same again. So people may come back and say, hey, you know, I, I wish it was like it was back then. It's going to be a little bit like after 2001, where security took on a whole different level. If we think about airports, it's a different experience. Same thing. Just think about the socioeconomic impact of what we're going through right now with social distancing. How safe will we really feel to get on a cruise, to get on a plane, to go to concerts, to go back to restaurants? These are all things we want, but we have a whole level of awareness of our own personal safety and health and those around us. So things will just be really different. So the key with organizations as they're going through this phase is to do an activity that I call a recommitment, which is helping individuals go through a phase of working through, are they really recommitted to the new norms that this company's established and creating some sort of commitment to that. They're either in or out, so they're not anchoring back to the past. It's gonna be really, really important or they're gonna be living in a world that just no longer exists. So the key things to try here is get yourself into high gear, you know, get ready for that. Have ideas, innovate openly and push the boundaries. This is the stage for that. It's the time to maximize opportunity. It's the time to use the cognitive upper part of your brain. Um, in this first phase in chaos, you're really operating at the lower part of your brain. You're in the empathy, the reactionary, the amygdala. Now we're back into the, the creative, the analytical. That's gonna be the most important part of the brain to be focusing in on in this new normal. Vicky, let me ask you about that because what I've realized is that what I'm, I'm in creative phase right now and it's also fueled a little bit by adrenaline. So this is where, you know, models are fantastic for giving you some simplicity about the world, but of course the world is complex too. So it, it, I'm just noticing, oh, I'm doing both and, and I'm, I'm trying my best to bring in some of these practices like the mornings being for myself and slowing down and so on, uh, moving my body so that I can be even more creative. Because well, while it looks like I'm really creative right now, I get all this feedback from people how all these ideas I'm doing and innovation and creativity, actually it's coming fueled from this energy rather than fueled from space and, and, and pure ideas. Yeah, I love that, Rich. Yeah, and I know that you know, you go, you'll go backwards and forwards, you can have elements of each of these phases, but it's a useful construct to be thinking about, most importantly, where are other people in your life? So if you were to match your family members, uh, your team, your clients, I do this every week. Where are they this week? How are they reacting? What am I experiencing with them? And match your response to where they are. So if they are in chaos and you're experiencing that with them, know that they require empathy and care and help to take forward basic small tiny steps help them focus on those small steps to move to the next stage. If, you, if they're in chaos and you are in acceptance or new normal and you're very rational, you're looking at opportunities, you can really come across as tone deaf. It's, 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 a, very, it's a very interesting experience when you one way and someone else is the other and it just doesn't feel good. So the key here, really my key takeaway from this model is really match your response to where the other person's at so that you come across as the way they need you to be in that moment. And it can feel really hard if you're in acceptance when you're normal and then chaos and you just wanna get them out of it, especially family members. Uh, we're the worst when we're with our family members, but know that that's not okay. You need to be with them in the stage that they're at because it's the only way that you can then move them through each of the phases. That, that's really important, Vicky, for those of us who are coaches and consultants, because it can be easy to say to people, well, you're creating your own reality, or, or you're only ever living in your, the feeling of your thinking, all these wonderful coaching phrases, but it, there are, and, and whilst 100% there's truth in that, you know, read man's search for meaning to see how you can be in the worst of circumstances and create your own reality. There's also a truth that when you're feeling and overwhelmed by those feelings of what's happening, you, you can't engage with someone who's talking about these high level concepts. Yeah, yeah, and for me, that's why I find I need so many naps because I'm operating many, you know, many um, days in the acceptance phase, and then I'll find myself having to be empathetic for those in the chaos phase, and it's exhausting. You know, I'm good at it, I love it, but then I need a good old nap just to be okay with that. Yeah, um, let me look at a couple of more questions. Uh, first of all, I want to read out. There's an acknowledgement for you from Megan. She says, "Vicky, I'm appreciating your transmission of trust." and ease, humility, and power 
that come through you as you speak. And I, I really <laughs> wanted to echo that. It's a beautiful acknowledgement. Oh, thank you. Um, it's a lot. I have a client who feels guilty they're not doing enough and her manager's too busy to read her updates. She's worried that they will feel she's not working hard enough. What do you suggest in this case? Yeah, it's... Um... I've got another module on how to not go dark during this period because <laughs> what is the right level of communication that needs to happen you know, as we think about this because we need to focus on the most important activities that are the most important to wherever this person's at right now so you know if you're giving them updates and they're not landing I would get really creative in terms of what is the right way to engage with them um, whether it is you know, which is a massive fan of the, the video text message, which I, which I think are wonderful. You know, there, there could be many different ways you could try and engage with them to have the right conversation, but know that probably the strategy you're using is not working if you're not actually getting through to them. Thanks, Vicky. Um, let's have a look here. How would you apply or speak about phase three to individuals rather than a team or a company context? And do you have any tips for reigniting people's resilience and power for phase three? Oh, great questions. For me, I like to share the whole model, to be honest, because it's a helpful framework of, you know, every time I share it, people go, ah, oh, just a relief. I can see where I'm feeling, what I'm feeling. And I can see that the, this new normal, <clears throat> whatever you end up calling it, um, doesn't really matter. I can see how it's going to be cate categorized by <clears throat> a very different feeling tone, very different level of energy. And so I would recommend talking them through the whole model and it becomes fairly organic then for them to see some of the value of what that new normal will look like. I would also recommend that you do tell them that, hey, when you do get to that stage, it's really, really important to recommit to the environment you find yourself in or go find another one. Because if you keep anchoring to the past, like anything, it, it doesn't work. So it's almost put on a new hat, so this is a brand new job, this is a brand new world I'm in right now, what's it gonna take for me to show up as though this was brand new? But I also have the knowledge and experience of everything that makes this environment what it is today. So I've got that added advantage rather than being somebody brand new to it. But you have to recommit, because otherwise it's so easy for our brains to go back to, we was so nice before, you know, we could sit next to each other. <laughs> Vicky, there's a great question coming um, just now about how, would you compare this to the stages of grief? And yeah. I think there's a real parallel yeah. here. So. Yeah, yeah. Grief theory, change curve theory, they, they're all similar. We've just simplified it into three to make it easier to consume and then applied it to yourself, your team, your company, what you can do about it. Beautiful. Um, could you, in 60 seconds, give us a sense of the whole model? Like how would you just, in, in a few, few words as possible, just give an overview of this model you described. So the detail we went through, people can rewatch this video later. We'll put it on the podcast. They can listen to it. You'll get, we'll, we'll in, come join us in the Facebook group. You guys, it's called serve lead serve. If you're not already there, type your name into that. We'll, we'll let you in later and we'll, we'll post that link. So you'll have the model uh, as, as a document, but just as a recap in this moment, Vicky, how would you summarize that, that model? You muted yourself, Vicky, or did you hit me? All right, there we go, I'm back. So when we think about what we're experiencing right now, it's helpful to think of it in three phases, chaos, acceptance, and the new normal. Chaos is where we feel uncertain, people need safety. Acceptance feels very frustrating, it feels like we've been here way too long and it's never gonna go away. And so our energy tends to drop because the adrenaline hit is gone. And the new normal is where the opportunities arise again, but it's going to feel very, very busy as teams are depleted and organizations are go, go, go. So the key thing here is to realize that individuals are going to be at different phases and that's okay. You can go backwards as well as forwards and make sure you tune your actions and your response to the phase they're in to help them through this journey. That was a beautiful way to capture it. That was great. So I loved this model when I heard it the first time. I, I, I spent a long time reading through the document to get a sense of it. I love the way that it differentiates between how you'll feel or show up as an individual and then as a team and then as an organization. 
I love the way it takes me through these different phases. And, and that gives me some clarity in, in a world that's uncertain. When I can have a little bit more certainty, Vicky, uh, I feel more embodied and more powerful. In fact, I heard Stephen Kotler say recently that fear it, it, it equals anxiety plus uncertainty. And I love distinguishing those two. Fear equals anxiety plus uncertainty. Once you know that, if you're anxious, there are things you can do to help with anxiety. You'll know what they are for your clients. Help them take some deep breaths, go for a walk, switch off technology. When you're in uncertainty, there are things you can do to help you be more certain. Vicky's exercise about where do you want to be in the next five years? Uh, a model like this that gives you some clarity about the world. When you separate out those two elements of fear, you can work on the anxiety or you can work on the uncertainty or both. And then the fear begins to go away. And so Vicky, I'm very grateful to you for this model of this way of thinking, because it means that I can use it for myself. I can share it with my clients. And then for all of you, I really recommend you go two layers deep call up a client, say, I've got this model I want to share with you. And when you've shared it, say, tell me about your clients. Tell me about your customers. Who can we share this with? What are they going through right now? Would you like me to get on a call with one of, with you and your clients? Serve two layers deep. It's really powerful. It has such an amazing impact. Um, Vicky, let's, let me ask everyone. We've got a few more minutes. Uh, will you please share your acknowledgements for Vicky here um, in, in, the, in the chat. And, and it's nice when someone says, wow, that was amazing. But as a speaker, or as a teacher, as a coach, it's, it's hard for that to land. It feels nice for a second. Get really specific. When you shared this one thing, Vicky, or this is what I, I got from your presence, Vicky, or for this, this model, the more specific you can be, the, the more powerful the impact is. And while you're doing that, I want to share a couple of things that came up really regarding the other side of things. And I'll come back to you before we finish, Vicky. Um, somebody asked, uh, uh, this all sounds great for people who are in a good financial position, but how do you slow down to speed up if you're stuck in chaos and you're scared that if you slow down, you won't have enough clients to sustain you when you come out of this? This is very specific about coaching. I moved too slowly in 2008 and barely survived. I'm moving way too fast now to try to avoid the same fate or worse. I want to thrive. I still spend my self care and family time, but I spend all day moving at light speed, trying to do as much as I can. Just reading that out loud, Vicky, it feels overwhelming. So um, for, for, I won't say the name of the person who wrote that, but I'll speak to this from the place, because I wrote a book called The Prosperous Coach, which is about building a business one relationship at a time. And if you're in fear mode, if you're in struggle mode, if you're needing your next client more than they need you, you can't enroll clients. It just doesn't work that way. And so if you really are in that mode, then do what needs to be done. Go to your mortgage lender and ask to have an uh, extension on your payments or a, a mortgage holiday, whatever they call it. Go for these uh, PPP loans and various government ways to get support. Uh, find out other ways that you can cut your costs drastically right now. And, and you can't be in client creation mode when you're desperate for a client, I, I'm, I, it just doesn't work that way. And so you have to find ways to, to, to slow down. It doesn't mean that you can't at the very same time speed up, be as creative as you can. You know, I have a uh, hundred thousand dollar clients. I have a mastermind group called four PC. People pay $25,000 a year to be in We've had people in for three, four, six years. But I'm also thinking right now, what I'm not doing is discounting what I do. That will make you feel cheap and sound cheap and will turn off people. It's counterintuitive. Don't, don't discount, but it doesn't mean you can't be creative. It dawned on me a few days ago. Well, what if I created a small group of people who need support for the next hundred days? I made up this idea of a hundred days of coaching with me in a small group. It's two and a half thousand dollars, 25 of you. I'm going to really support you and, and be with you for a hundred days. And, and within 10 days, 25 spots had gone. I made something up completely different and filled that group. How can you be creative? Is, is, and you, and you, the only way you can be creative is slowing down. You can't create from fear and adrenaline or you, you won't be as creative as you could be. So on that coaching note, you have to find ways to take care of your, your health and your finances. And you can't create a client from fear and from scarcity. And I really recommend if you're not already part of our community, uh, uh, 
go to my website, sign up for our newsletter, uh, uh, go to our Facebook group and, and join there. We've got uh, 2000 people who are almost every day we're sharing stuff like this of value. And we'll do some more calls like this, either with me leading or with other interesting people from my community in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, Vicky, are you taking some time to read the acknowledgements coming in for you? <laughs> it's too overwhelming, Rich. I can't see them all. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I, I will hit the, there's a download button so I can download this oh, before, before we finish. And we, that'd be great. Oh, I'd love that. Thank you so much, everybody. You've all been so generous and kind with your time. Um, thank you, guys. We're going to pause in this moment, give you time to get ready for whatever you're doing next. Um, but I'm going to ask to do this before we finish. It's going to be a little bit crazy. But in this disconnected world, let's feel a little bit more connection for a moment. So in a moment, I'm going to hit unmute all. And when I do, send each other some love. I'm going to leave it on for a, for a minute or so. We can just, whatever you want to share out loud, uh, send us some love, uh, share what you're up to, give Vicky acknowledgements. It doesn't matter that we can't hear your individual words. Let's just feel a moment of connection right now. So Vicky, thank you so much. We'll speak later. Thank you, guys. Make sure you come and join us and what we're up to. Um, let me hit unmute for everybody. Bye. All of you, no, guys. Thanks. Thank you all. Ah. Take care. Soon. Thank you for your support. Thank you. 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 Thank you.